as promised, uh, in this short video, we focus on three examples. Okay, we begin with example 5.8. So in this example, we know uh, on January 1st, 2003, uh, the fund value was $2 million. So it's $2 million. Uh, during the year of 2003, the pension fund paid out in benefits on July 1st, okay, paid out 100, 100K. Uh, and also on September 1st, paid out 100K. It also received a contribution of 20,000 on November 1st. The end value by the end of the year of 2003 was 1.9 million. Okay, so that's all the information we have about the, uh, the all the evolutions, time values, right? So now let's try to calculate the dollar weighted interest rate so we have our you know so you can you can identify right so here you can identify f0 is 2 million ft is 1.9 million okay or you know if if you want you can put everything in in thousands because we have everything in k so this would be 2000 and uh, our final value would be 19,000. Okay, so everything in 1,000 units. Okay. Uh, we have three cash flows. We have C1 equals negative 100, C2 equals negative 100, and C3 equals positive 20. So now let's, uh, let's establish the equation. So actually, this is F1 because this is the one year. Uh, 2,000 times by 1 plus i, okay? Because C1 is negative, so i minus 1 plus i. So here would be um, the amount of time from uh, June 1st to the end of the year. So they are seven months, not six, because from the first day of January to the first day of July, they are five months. Right, so which means in the remaining, there are seven months. Okay. Here it will be four. Well, you can also count your fingers, right? So from September, October, November, December, there are four months. Okay, for the November contribution, it will accumulate for two months, November and December. So it's two over 12. In the end, I have 1900. Of course, you know, everything's in thousand. Uh, technically, this equation is very, very difficult to solve. That's why uh, we have a very good approximation. So we always use this approximation. That is one plus i to the n's we approximated by one plus n i. So uh, unless it's specified otherwise, we always apply this approximation uh, to help us to solve the equation. So given the above approximation, then I can easily calculate right So from here I can, Calculate I is about 4.2%, which is actually very, very close to the true solution, which is 4.18%. It's very, very close. Uh, but by applying this approximation, we can always solve this equation, this approximated equation, right? Uh, by the way, this approximation is by the so called Taylor expansion, you know, if you studied calculus, probably you know, uh, Michelin formula, whatever you want to call it, is basically you, you expand it by polynomials. 
So uh, that is an example of dollar value, dollar weighted, so that is dollar weighted. So in the next example, we study time weighted. 5.10, uh, the value of a pension on uh, January 1st, uh, everything else is the same, the same to the previous one. Okay, so all I need to give you is, uh, I can use this same table to give you some information. So let me change to different color. So the value is still the same. Uh, now I know here, my F1 is 2.05 million, okay? Uh, right before September 1st, my fund value is 2 million. Right before November 1st, my fund value is 1.99 million, okay? and uh, what does everything so basically i just need to know um my account value right before each cash flow so once we have this uh what what the textbook suggests you to do is to um, actually get a table a table like this uh date or the account values so here's ci So at the beginning, January 1st, we know here is $2 million. Well, obviously there's no cash flow in, cash flow out uh, at that point. Okay, the first time we have something change is here. Okay, uh, everything is in million. Well, we can, we can, we can change everything to uh, 2000 to, to keep the number same. So here we know it's the money out would be negative 100. Okay. Uh, by September 1st, our account value goes back to 2 million and uh, there's another 100,000 uh, withdrawal. And uh, on November 1st, our account value is one million nine hundred and ninety thousand, and then we have a contribution of twenty. Uh, and uh, finally, by the end of the year, our account value is nine million and uh, uh, one million and nine hundred k. So that's everything, right? So now, since we only have one year, so it's one plus i two one well, two to the first. Okay, so now let's let's figure out how, how things change, right? So it should be uh, right before your C1, the account value is 2050 divided by 2000. Okay, and then will be F2, F2 is 2000. Okay, but you, you do not divide by F1, but you divide by F1, then plus the contribution here is actually uh, withdraw, so you minus 100 times by 1,990 divided by, so now your previous end value would be 2,000 minus 100, okay? And uh, for the last transaction, we have 1,900 divided by 1990 plus this contribution. Okay, so pretty much I'm um, applying the, uh, the formula. So from here, we know I is 4.08%. This is time weighted. Right, so again, uh, the purpose of defining the time weighted return is to get rid of the impact of additional cash flows to the fund, right? So if there's money out, you need to minus. If there's money in, you plus. And then once you take care of that, well, the, the extra contribution 
that doesn't matter. And then we do, uh, you know, similar to geometric average, right, to get the result. So uh, that's time weighted. Uh, we do have 5.11, but that's very close to 5.10. Uh, finally, we study a very interesting example, 5.12, and then we will end this video. So in this example, we have two managers, Elizabeth and Andrew, okay? Uh, let's look at Elizabeth's performance first. Uh, we begin January 1st, 03. The initial value of the fund is $1,000. And uh, by the end of the year, it's 2000 Okay. And then on January 1st, it's, it's really difficult to, to point, but on January 1st, uh, let me move it to uh, So the last day, the fund value is 2000. And uh, let me also move it slightly to the left. See, on January 1st, 04, there is some money in, there's a deposit of 20,000. Okay, a uh, deposit of 20,000 is made to Elizabeth, Elizabeth fund. Uh, the new fund balance obviously becomes 22,000. By the end of the year, the fund value is 22,000, okay? So first, let's, let's look at the year by year, right? So if we look at the first year for Elizabeth, uh, it starts with 1,000, it grows to 2,000. So end value divided by initial value minus one. So it's actually one. So if you want to write in percentage, that is 100%, so doubles, right? The fund actually doubles in the first year. Uh, under the management of Elizabeth. Now let's look at the second year. Well, the end value is 22,000. The initial value is also 22,000, right? Because uh, the end value from the previous year is 2,000 and there's additional contribution. So adding together on January 1st, the fund value is 22,000. By the end of 2004, the fund value is still 22,000. So it does not make any money, does not lose any money. So the, the return in the second year is simply zero, zero percent. Now let's take a look at, uh, you know, dollar value uh, versus uh, time value. So let's do uh, first do dollar value, dollar. So assume it is I, so 1,000, will be accumulated by two years. 20,000 will be accumulated by one year. In the end, we know the fund value is 22,000. Uh, this is a quadratic, so you don't need to approximate, right? You can simply expand and uh, solve a quadratic equation. So here you have 22, Uh, the, you don't expand the textbook wants you to introduce x to denote one plus i then we have a quadratic equation right so obviously you can further simplify by dividing by 1000 then we have the famous result for the quadratic equation right so 2a, a is 1. On top, we have negative b plus minus b squared minus 4 times a times c. So obviously, we will, we will pick the plus sign. Otherwise, we get negative. Right? Here, it's, it's assumed positive. So x would be 1 plus i equals about 1.04561. So it's about 4.5%, right? 
4.54% uh, if you want to write. So this is the uh, dollar weighted. Next, let's do time weighted. Dollar weighted. Next, let's do time weighted. Okay, well, we need to apply our standard formula. So on the left hand side is easy because here we have two years, so it's one plus i to, uh, to the second. Okay, uh, before the deposit of 20,000, the found value is 2,000. So 2,000 divided by um, 1,000. The end value is 22,000. After the contribution, we have this, right? So it's actually two. Right, because the next one is, is one, the first one is two. So from here we get I would be about four point not four point forty forty one point four percent. So if you look at this, uh, you also see that time weighted interest rate is also not perfect, right? Because uh, the result shows that uh, Elizabeth actually makes 41.4% return each year, right? Uh, well, you know, it, it, uh, it's, it's not exactly, well, you know, or, or at least this could be uh, debated, right? Uh, she, she's able to make 100% in the first year, 0% in the second year. So now it always it pretty much boils down uh, how you how you do the average, right? So here we when we do average, it seems that we place a lot of weight on zero, right? This dollar weighted, okay? Uh, that's not surprising. That is because uh, the one thousand uh, one hundred percent is made on one thousand dollars, right? And zero percent is made on 22,000. So because 22,000 is much, much bigger than 1,000, right? So uh, it's, once you do the dollar weighted, you put more weight on big money, it tends to, tends to be close to 0%, right? Okay, next, when you apply time weighted, well, it's somehow, you know, uh, the value, it's somehow in between. Right. I mean, exactly the middle point would be 50%, but now we have uh, 41%. So it's, it's, it's closer to the middle point. Right? That's what we get from time, uh, time weighted. Uh, next, let's look at the second manager, Andrew. Uh, let's draw his timeline first. So the beginning, the the count value is the same, 1,000, on January 1st, 2003. At the end of the year, uh, the value is 1,200, okay? And uh, then, on, you know, it's, it's, it's very close, but uh, uh, I don't want to get two points stick together, so I move it to the right-hand side. Uh, on, Janu on January 1st, 2004, a withdrawal of negative 1,000. So this is the money out, uh, it's made. New balance becomes $200 after this withdrawal. Uh, in the end of the year, the account value is 180 at the end of the year of 2004. So if we, if we look at the performance of Andrew year by year, in the first year, it's obvious it's uh, 1,200 divided by 1,000 minus one, so it's 20%. In the second year, the end value is 180. The beginning value is 200 minus one, it's actually negative 10%. All right. So by looking at the performance in each year, our conclusion should be Elizabeth is a better manager than Andrew, right? She beats Andrew in each year. In the first year, she, uh, she's able to deliver 100%. Andrew only makes 20%. In the second year, 
uh, she breaks even, right? But and you lose, well, but and you lose his money. So uh, in conclusion, uh, Elizabeth is a better manager. Uh, but nevertheless, let's do the competition for dollar weighted first. Okay. Um, when we do dollar weighted, uh, what do we have? We have one thousand one plus i square, and then we do minus one thousand one plus i. In the end, we get one hundred and eighty. Right. So when you solve this equation, you will be able to get the dollar weighted interest rate for NU is fifteen point six percent. Okay. Uh, what is the number for Elizabeth? Well, Elizabeth is only 4.5%, right? Uh, the reason is because, again, uh, the bigger amount, 20%, is made for bigger value, 1,000, right? Uh, when she, uh, when, when Andrew loses money, ten, negative 10% is on a smaller dollar amount, 200. So we place more weight on 20%. That's why eventually this dollar weighted interest rate is 15.6%, which is very close to 20%, right? So if we apply dollar weighted, we actually would conclude Andrew is a better manager, right? You see the danger of using a dollar weighted return. Uh, if we do time weighted, we will get, on the left-hand side, it's always easy. Okay, then you have 1,200 divided by 1,000, and then it would be 180 divided by 200. So uh, this is actually easy to compute. You get this is about 1.08. So the time weighted interest rate would be 3.9%. 3.9% is is actually very close to, to zero, right? Because um, once we apply time weighted, it's, um, uh, it tends to do the opposite thing, uh, but of course, it depends on the value of, of, of these two. Uh, 3.9, so for, for Elizabeth, it's 41.4%. So uh, from this particular example, we can see that neither dollar valued nor time valued interest rates provides a very good measure, right? Neither of them is, is enough because if you look at the dollar value, it might even give you the wrong conclusion, right? Uh, if you apply time weighted, the difference is not really that striking, right? 3.9% to 41.4%. Uh, uh, so, you know, those are, those are standard measurement. We, we, always, uh, we always report, or at least the funds, all the uh, mutual funds, hedge funds, they report the performance. Uh, from this particular example, we see that, right? Looking at, looking at any of these numbers, it's, it's not enough, right? But uh, nevertheless, uh, it provides some information. Uh, it's just that the information may not be accurate enough. In, in some cases, uh, the information may even be misleading. For instance, in the dollar weighted return, right? So here we have 15.6%. Andrew is above a lot, right? If, if we compare to the dollar weighted return of Elizabeth, right? It's, 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 it's almost, uh, uh, it's more than 3%. Uh, it's, it's more than three times better, right? Uh, that's obviously the wrong conclusion. Uh, but nevertheless, you should know how to how to do the calculation for both time weighted and uh, dollar weighted. So let me conclude here for uh, this section.